All right, uh, welcome to Happy Hippo Learning. My name is Daniel, and today I'm going to cover um, so, sort of the intuition behind Bayes' theorem, why it actually works. Um, so first, in order to understand this, this, this complicated formula, we need to go back to some ideas from discrete probability. And discrete meaning we have sort of some sort of, um, it describes countable, like uh, sort of separated events instead of continuous um, sort of range of numbers. So um, the probability of an event happening is the number of ways that event could happen divided by the sample space. And what that is, is it's the describes all the possible outcomes. So sample space. This is our event. So if we apply this to flipping a coin, the probability of getting heads is equal to, so our event, uh, how many ways can we get heads? Just one. So one on top. And how many possible outcomes are there? Well, there's heads and there's tails. So that's two on the bottom. And so we get our familiar answer of one half. Now, if we apply this to Bayes' theorem, we kind of understand what's going on. So just sort of to understand this conditional probability. If, so this is saying the probability that of B happening given that A has already happened. But we're not in that space yet of A already having happened. We can't assume that yet. So if we multiply by the probability of A, that's bringing us into that space where, okay, we're saying, okay, A has happened. Now we can look at the probability of B happening. So and when we look on the bottom, we see it again, right? Because, but that makes sense because remember with our ideas from discrete probability, we have this outcome of heads, and heads is also on the bottom because heads is part of the total sample space. So we see this again. And then this part is, okay, so we're looking at A, but what if, what's the, what else could happen? A might not happen. So we look at A bar, which is just describes anything other than A, and <laughs> multiply that by this other probability, probability of B happening given that A doesn't happen. So if we look back at what we're originally trying to say, we're saying that, okay, B has happened. What's the chance that A is going to happen? So in all these situations, like here, like we're, we're seeing that, um, B, we're assuming B has happened, like right here, like it's probability of B given A. We're, we're examining the probability that B is going to happen in certain situations. But what we're really interested in is when B, B happens, when is A going to happen? So, and that's what we're trying to examine here. So hopefully that makes a little more sense, um, gives you some intuition behind Bayes' theorem. Um, and this, hopefully this idea of discrete probability um, will give you yeah, some intuition behind base there. Uh, good luck with your studies.